What's up guys, it's the High Tech Redneck. Uh, this video is about old knives and how much I love them. Um, these are some old knives I've had since I was uh, younger. Um, I haven't had this one for a very long time, a few years. Uh, I've had this one for over 10 years and I've had this one for closing in on 20. Um, all of these knives have been through very hard use. All of these knives have been abused. And all of these knives have held up very well. And uh, I know some of you are probably laughing over here at this old Rambo survival knife thing. But um, that's another thing I wanted to talk about here is uh, that knife's not nearly as bad as, you, as, as some of the ones made today that look just like it. Let's start with the baby. Now this is the old hickory paring knife. Um, I found this knife the same way I found this one. Uh, someone had it in their house in a drawer somewhere or in a shed somewhere. I was digging through stuff with them and I found it. It was all covered in rust. It was, you know, it looked like it was ruined. It looked like something you would just throw away and go get a real knife. And, and, uh, I asked the people, what are you going to do with this? I said, oh, nothing. It's a piece of junk. I never even used that. Well, obviously not. It was caked in rust. So I said, well, give it to me. I'll take it. And I said, okay, sure. Take the thing. I don't want it. So I took it home, scraped the rust off with a, a little scraping tool and polish it up with some never dull and give it a good sharpening and next thing you know you've got an amazing knife. This is my favorite small utility knife. Um, this beats every folder, every fixed blade, every everything I have ever used for small utility tasks. It's an extremely thin little blade, very small. It's a half tang and it impresses me constantly. Every time I use this thing it impresses me. It, uh, it's such a thin, thin blade. It's a chisel grind originally, so it was only ground on one side here. And if you look at the edge, you can barely see light reflecting where the edge is sharpened. And I've sharpened this 20 or 30 times now, and it just takes a few seconds on a soft stone to sharpen this because the edge is so tiny, you, you have very little metal to remove, and it's razor sharp all over again. It is sharpened on both sides here. And... Uh, it's like a razor blade on steroids, and I've said that before. Um, it's very small, but it's still very strong. The blade is fairly flexible for, for a fixed blade. It is slightly flexible. It's made out of 1095 high carbon steel with a good heat treat made by Ontario, which is uh, pretty cool. And this is uh, this is a kitchen knife, actually. It's, it's Old Hickory is the brand, and they call them that because they use just an old plain hickory handle with a cheap brass rivet and a small tang, a half tang coming through here. It's very simple construction, very simple design. And they're made to be as cheap as possible, yet high quality. And they are exactly that. You can buy these for about 7 or $8 or less online, directly from Old Hickory, in fact. And it's worth having a dozen of them laying around. These are the best small utility knives that you could ever ask for. Everything from working on electronics to small first aid. You know, anything that isn't food, basically, because this is high carbon. And you could even use it for food if you buy a new one. This one's probably as old as my grandpa. And that's why it was all rusted and nasty. But if you have a new one that's shiny, you could even use it for food prep. Just use vegetable oil instead of WD-40. Um, this thing is great. And, like I said, it was free, given to me by somebody who was going to throw it away. The next one is another of the same thing. Now, this is the old piece of junk sheath that came with this thing. I use it on this knife because I never really carry this knife. I just keep it laying around, and I use it around my house. It's great for utility tasks. Once again, this is a heavier blade, a little thicker, but still not thick at all compared to modern fixed blade knives like this Buck Vanguard, which is my favorite knife, by the way. Buy five of these if you can. Um, yeah, you can see it's very thin. But it's a longer blade. It is a clip point blade. Uh, it has a nice big finger choil here. And it's very, very good. It balances well in the hand when you choke up on it to do fine work. And yet you can still make big long slicing cuts when you're doing fine work because you've got such a big blade. It's more of a standard thickness here so it's not going to cut as well as the little baby. It is a nice palm filling handle. It, uh, it is a full tang, but it doesn't come down completely to the bottom. It stops here on the way down, but it's still very strong for what it is. And I've beaten this knife. I've used it in the woods for bushcraft and, you know, really hard, abusive use and not been able to see any problems with it. No edge rolls, none of that. And once again, it's high carbon steel. It's easy to sharpen, holds an edge well. I don't know what kind of steel this is. I don't know who made this knife. I just know it's a good knife and I won't throw it away because it is a good knife. And last but not least here, we have the very old Rambo style fixed blade survival knife. Um, now this thing 
is kind of ridiculous in design. This is something I bought for myself at around the age of, oh, I don't know, eight, seven, somewhere in there. Um, I found this at a flea market. I paid $10 for it, brand new. The handle is made out of pot metal. It's, it's hollow. There's nothing left in the handle. The compass does not work at all anymore it is junk it you it did work for about you know 10 years and then I, I i beat the crap out of this knife and it broke the little weight inside of the compass and it just rattles around and it won't point north anymore um the saw is useless the bottle opener i guess you could use that but it's really stupid to have one on a knife uh it's a clip point but it's it, it's almost like a drop point because it comes so far down here so it's not too bad to sharpen um, it holds a good edge considering it is high carbon steel. I've worn most of the coating off of this one. This is, this was my play toy when I was a kid. I carried this knife around the woods as a young teen. I used to live in the woods and, uh, or, you know, right on the edge of the woods, not really in the woods, but you know, my grandparents would get tired of me. They'd throw me out of the house with a gun and the knife and say, go play. And I'd run around the woods with this thing. I made walking sticks and, you know, shave the bark off of little trees and chop down stuff. I even used this saw to cut some stuff back when I was young and stupid. <laughs> and, uh, it held up really well. And then after I was a grown man and I, I really became a serious knife nut and started collecting better knives, I decided to put this through the proving grounds and I took it out to my old campsite, the same one from when I was a kid. And I went out there and I did some heavy batoning and I did some chopping with this knife and I tried to break this knife because I saw reviews on YouTube of people taking this knife and just whack whack snap and it was broken and it was gone. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I carried one of those knives for a long time and it was not that weak. So, uh, if you look at the ones they make today, I'm pretty sure they're terrible, but these older ones are not as terrible. You can see here where I batoned through a piece of wood, you know, five, six inches long, however wide that blade is from tip all the way to the, to the hilt here. And I had to baton through on the back of this. I thought I was going to break it. I said, man, this is pot metal. It's going to break through. So I did it somewhat carefully, but I still beat the crap out of it. As you can see, I knocked a bunch of the coating off of this and then I batoned the crap out of it on smaller stuff. And, uh, it held up amazingly well. Honestly, I, I was surprised that I did not break it. Uh, for those of you who already know, the, this, this blade ends in a tiny threaded post that comes down about this deep, and then there's a nut that screws it on from the inside. And it did get loose on me. The blade did rattle. I had to take it home and tighten up. But at the end of the day, it's a good knife. And I would say that if you had to survive with this knife, like in a real-life survival situation, you could do it. Maybe not the ones today, but these older ones, you can do it. If you're a grown man or someone with a little common sense and you know how to handle a knife, um, you can use that without breaking it very easily. I did it. And I mean, I tried to break that knife. I, I, I didn't, well, I didn't quite try to destroy it, but I did use it in ways where I expected it to break after the things that I had seen. And it did not break. It held up for me very well. And it's, you know, it, I keep it as a relic because it, it was my little childhood toy. It was, it was, it was, it was my big knife when I was a little kid. And it's just cool to have laying around, but I actually do use this knife now and, uh, I trust it. I like that knife and I like all of these knives and considering that, that I've paid t a total of $10 for all three of these knives together, uh, you can't go wrong guys. These are some of the best knives I own when it comes down to it. Uh, except for this, I wouldn't say this one's the best knife I own, but these two are some of the best knives I own. And I use these more often than I do my more high-end, nicer fixed blades, except for the Buck Vanguard, which of course, like I said, is my favorite and I've got it on me every day. So, uh, for applications that are a little too rough for this Vanguard that I don't want to scratch my blade up really bad or, you know, dull it up a whole lot, I grab one of these two and uh, they work perfectly fine. So once again, I'm going to suggest to you guys, if you see some old junky rusty knife laying around in somebody's house, pick it up, man. Work on it a little bit. <laughs> a lot of them are really great knives. They will impress you. And just because they're not, you know, made out of S30V and a quarter inch thick does not mean that they're not perfectly good knives. So yeah, there's something to think about for you guys. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it.